Hello everyone, I am Mohit Roy and today I am the host for your session and today we are here for the session of Allometallurgy Interview Experiences. Now here is Rachana Ma'am who got a job in Fractal Analysis. Congratulations for this assessment. Thank you Mohit. Yes Ma'am. Ma'am, can you explain the role of you in company and also the job profile? Okay. So my name is Rachana. I am currently a final year undergrad in Metallurgical and Materials Engineering of NIT Jamshed. So, I have got a full-time employment role in the campus placement at Fractal Analytics as an Imagineer, also known as Data Analyst. So, the company basically is an analytical company wherein it works with the Fortune 500 companies uh, and helps them uh, solve their business problems with a combination of both analytics as well as the artificial intelligence based decision making. So, my role will be as a data analyst, as I've mentioned. Uh, so, it is uh, similar to that working on the data related tools, etc. Yes, ma'am. And next, can you explain about the eligibility for this company? Okay, so the eligibility is you have to be more than 60% in your 10s and 12s, and the CGPA would be more than 7. Yes, ma'am, okay. ma you got an uh, internship in DSLP, which is a core company, and you have secured a job in non core company, which is Fractal Analysis. Can you uh, explain about the reason? and the decision which you have made for it. Okay, so uh, always it was suggested by the seniors that to fix a particular domain like either you would go to core or non-core but in my case I have I've never able to make that decision because I have a really balanced interest on both of these domains. So uh, but core was my priority like I always have an uh, good interest on core and I'm enthusiastic in learning all of those things. So TSLP happened just because of the core interest which I've had and after my internship was done that I've done my internship in June, uh, July and August. So after it was done I felt uh, I'm not uh, a person who will be good enough or suitable enough for this core domain. Then I started realizing what I have to do next either core or non-core. And then I've started non-core uh, intelligently. I wouldn't say that I'm a new person to non-core that time because uh, as I said, uh, priorly only I was balancing my core and non-core. Like I was preparing some non-core related skills and all. And when this idea happened that, okay, uh, now I have to take a shift to non-core, then it wasn't that difficult for me. Uh, then I was picking up my skills and looking at what new I have to learn. Yes, ma'am. Mm and can you explain about this uh, placement structure which is of exams, interviews, etc. Okay, so uh, at Fractal uh, there are two rounds, primary screening and then the secondary. The primary is aptitude test as we all look, might know. So aptitude test is not similar to the one like most of the aptitude tests uh, wherein we have the verbal, quants and logical. Here it was a totally different, it was a one and a half hour based online test. Uh, with 217 questions nearly uh, and there are 11 sections which is testing on you know uh, cognitive ability, creative thinking, uh, our abstract reasoning and uh, psychometry based questions and a lot more. There are 11 sections in all. And then the secondary uh, screening is uh, consists of three interviews. The first interview is a technical based interview. The second is the apex round which is more of a personality based uh, test and the final one is the HC test also known as hiring committee test which is a HR round interview. And ma'am, uh, what is the level of aptitude questions and which resources you will be prefer for the placement? Okay, the level of aptitude question was quite moderate enough but it is uh, completely different from the regular tests, I would say. And the preparation, uh, there's, there isn't any special preparation which I've done for this aptitude. All I was doing through uh, previously was only helpful here also. Like the same, uh, I would suggest like go uh, and search for your resource and fix to that resource. So that would like sail you through the uh, aptitude test. Ma'am, are the questions were subjective or real life based questions? In the aptitude test or uh, the interview? Or both. Okay, in the aptitude test it was like uh, direct enough. There wasn't, uh, most of the sections were direct enough where you would put your thinking skills and all. And there are some subjects, uh, sub, uh, sections which is looking for, uh, you know, the real life or your personality based questions. Like in uh, verbal uh, speaking, there is a section of speaking skills wherein you were asked to put forward your ideas or your real life based situations and all. 
so that is one section and the interview mostly is personality driven there is nothing like they were expecting you to go and dig deep into your technical skills they were all expecting me uh, to bring out my personality and present them in uh, in the best way possible ma'am can you explain about these projects which you have done okay so my projects uh, i have kept my core project here also uh, i did not make a difference that core project wouldn't be suitable here in non core because i felt in my core project i was going and using all these data analysis things only so i felt why not i should make because that is what i've studied all these years for about 3 and now it's it will be 4 years like uh, my undergraduate so i'm not like shy enough or to like i don't want to hide that i'm not uh interested in core rather i wanted to link both core and non core uh like all my in all my three interviews i was putting this point and i was repeatedly being asked like why this shift to a non core when you have such a good core profile my answer was only one thing that in core uh, i'm like really enthusiastic but after looking into the practical situations i felt i'm not more suitable or like i'm not uh really i would really not like this experience rather if i take an on core then i would have a lot more uh, domains to explore and a lot more things to uh, do so that was my answer for uh, this shift we'll be having many competitions in our colleges say for example in ojas and of course you will definitely have an edge if you have a competition or achievement list in your resume profile uh personally i don't have any Uh, coding related competitions that i've achieved so far so if you have it's good enough ma'am and regarding this sports and cultural activities there are many going on in college we will be giving an edge no no okay so uh, yes those are really pretty beneficial i would say because my whole of the apex round which is the second round of interview uh, it was all about my extracurricular activities the interviewer is repeatedly asking me to you know dig uh, dig deeper and uh, like he wanted me to explain it very briefly of what i've done in the college and uh, priorly in school what kind of a student i was and all so if you have anything such then you will have more points to put in front of the interviewer Ma'am, how to make CV attractive, ma'am? Okay, making a CV attractive. Uh, the first and foremost tool is making it very simple and making sure that all the things are covered in the CV. So, uh, fix for a good template which you like, either your own one or go through some online resources. You will find a nice and creative one, and then make sure you all have the uh, important uh, sections in it, like the achievements, positions of responsibility. areas or interests and uh, then the extracurriculars your projects internships and the education and all there is a sequential order which you have to follow but uh, i did not mention it right now so and then uh, make sure that it is not very normal you uh, have to make it in a decent uh, and use it some nice words to um, make sure a good impression was there when the person is reading it so this is it yes ma'am very good and then what is uh, what will be having will be having is role of the seniors in this placement can you define the role of the seniors in placement okay so probably this is the one motivation factor which all of uh, we would mention that seniors role is huge in our placement process right from the beginning right from our third years we were consulting seniors of every company not only a particular company or a particular domain like if you ask them you will get a lot and lot of insights which you which would be helpful for your preparation as well so the entire second year and third year i was consulting so many seniors and once i got all the insights from them then i was calculating which one will be suitable for me and which one i should take and you know really uh, put in my preparation strategy and which one i should avoid looking at so after all this i have drafted one particular preparation which is really best for me and then i worked on that so seniors are really helpful i would suggest all of you like to uh, make sure you have a good bonding and relationship with your seniors they are the best teachers through your placement sessions Yes, ma'am. We'll keep the bonding with them. And ma'am, very difficult situation is us for to maintain a good CGPA. It's very difficult us to maintain a CGPA. Then how would you prefer us to maintain good CGPA? Okay. Maintaining a good CGPA, uh, 
not something very difficult i would say uh, it's just that we are learning for an entire semester but as we know we work on it for very few days like make sure you are concentrating in the class and then just priorly before the exam that preparation would be sufficient enough to maintain a decent well enough cg and simultaneously it's not too hectic being an engineering student and concentrating on multi tasks it's really not hectic i would say so uh, since you are in your second and third years make sure you are like exploring all the domains learning all new stuffs and then finally stick to one particular and focus on one particular task at one time near your placement sessions yes ma'am and then apart from the studies what all skills we have to study and prepare for the placement before coming and sitting in the placement okay uh what all you have to do before your placement is nothing uh, is not something that you will consciously do like it becomes as your unconscious things which you do like in your college there are lots and lots of teams in our college clubs and all so make sure you are actively participating in it no matter be it cultural or technical or whatever uh, take part in it actively uh, unknowingly you will get to learn a lot of soft skills like team work decision making problem solving and all which are indirectly helping you in you know bringing out your personality and making the best fit in the company itself Ma'am, as you told, the soft skill. What is the role of soft skill in the placement? Okay, soft skills is one more key. I would say, even if you have technical skills, a lot of coding skills or uh, any skill which is important for the placement, if you are not able to convey it to the interviewer, then your interview is gone. So the thing, uh, even if you are not good at any of these skills, with just the conversation or with just your communication skills, you can manage all of it. like if you are able to convince them in whatever way possible then you are half way through your interview so soft skills mm-hmm. play a huge role yes ma'am mm-hmm. and then when we have to start our placement preparation or from second sem third sem you you, you would suggest anything okay i would suggest like uh, if you start early it's not at all a wrong thing so those who are starting early do start and explore all the domains and uh, if you are really good at you know convincing yourself to uh, go into which stream then fine enough you start working on that particular domain if you're not really good at realizing where to go then make a balanced approach start studying both core and non core core as you know you will go to college regularly and you will study or something will go into your brain whenever you uh, go to your college and all and non core simultaneously you will have to work on that uh, the thing i approached is this one only i would suggest uh, like non core i started in my second year i've had a, a basics of all uh, the skill sets which are necessary and then i was concentrating on core more enough and then once my internship was over and i realized that now it's time for the non core shift then i started picking up all my skills and then i was brushing on them so it was not new or it was not a panic situation for me when i had to take a shift yes ma'am and what students what suggestions you will be giving to the juniors to uh, become placed in practical and other such companies non core companies okay uh the skill sets are the most important thing make sure you have a homogeneous skill sets like initially you should not go and target a particular company or a particular domain rather you see which skills are more interesting for you which uh, technologies or techniques are you uh, good at working in and then you fi- uh, finalize your domain of where to go and then start preparation for all those all of these skills like at first if you are going for a non core analytics company start working on your excel sql python tableau or whatever skills you can extend this there is no limit for you know the skill sets you possess and there is not a limited number of skills also i would say so start working on uh, all of these uh, it's on your it's based on your ability of how many you will be learning out of these and then when the placement session is approaching and when the company is coming then you concentrate and focus on that particular company and profile say for suppose if it is a non core and totally analytics based company start looking at the skills which the company needs and how the employees in the company uh, will be working on so then you make sure your resume is uh, framed accordingly you should not have a particular cv or resume for all the companies try to change it for every company as possible uh, because uh, 
even though they these are all belonging to the analytics based like fractal they are working more on uh, artificial intelligence so if you are a person who are really good at ai then that will fetch you your uh, position in the interview so if it is a supply chain related then it would be another case and if it is you know consulting based it would be another case if you have a good uh, knowledge in the case studies and all so based on the company you have to put your focus on when you are nearing your placement sessions so these are the two tips uh, i would give for preparing i'm going to suggest juniors to study ai and ml also uh, personally i don't know the details of ai and ml but as i said learning any new skill would be of benefit if it is not now tomorrow it would be beneficial only so if you are really keen on learning something new then go for it Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. That was a great interview with with you. You got you have told many good points, which will be having a good guidance for the approaching placements. Thank you, ma'am. And this is the interview, guys. And please subscribe to our channel, share our share this video, and also do like. Thank you, everyone.